In this video, I'm gonna make a rock, paper, scissor games with angular and material design. I actually got this idea from another YouTuber and open source developer, Anya Kubu, hopefully I pronounced your name right. And she made a game in vanilla JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And I thought that was really cool. So I thought oh, it'd be great to do something similar in angular material. So I will put a link to below in her YouTube channel. You should definitely check her out, subscribe to her channel to support her, encourage her to do more videos. So I really enjoyed watching her build some games. And she actually has Tetris on there, which looks a lot more complicated. These are our actions at the top. So rock, paper, scissors. And then this is the computer's results. And then this is the result of the, of the game. Ignore the rock, paper, scissor icons. I just use whatever material design had out of the box. But if I play, computer wins. You can see it keeps score at the top as well. Let's just beat the computer. 4-3, brilliant. Let's get into it. If you want to get into open source, improve your skills, get the job that you want, the money that you deserve, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel below and let me know what you think of my video and what else you'd like to see by leaving a comment below. Happy 2020 and in today's video we're going to code a game, yes a game, and we're going to use Angular and Material. And you might be thinking what game are we going to code? We're going to code rock, paper, scissors. Do you remember that game as a kid when you had to go kind of one, two, three, scissors, or one, two, three, paper, or one, two, three, rock. Damn it, I put the last one. But you get the idea. And rock kills scissors. <laughs> and then paper kills rock, and scissors kills paper. So the first thing we are gonna do is create an Angular project. And it's really easy to do that, so let me show you. All you need to do is install the Angular CLI with this command here. I've already done that. And then the next step we need to do is ng new and the name of your project. So let's get started. ng new, and we'll call this rock, paper, scissors, game. And we'll let Angular do its thing. Do we want to add routing? We probably don't need routing for this because it's going to have only a single page. We'll use SCSS. What is this? Angular creates a single page app, but we're, um, we don't need to navigate around. We don't need the back and the forward button. So I think routing is not required at this stage. But even if you added it in, it's not necessarily like you have to use it. Now you can see we have a, an Angular project, and if we navigate into that, rock, paper, scissors, game, and we open VS Code, you can see we have a standard Angular project. So now we've created the Angular project and we've seen the code is there. Let's boot up the Angular project and check it all works. And the first time we boot up the project, there's a little bit of time, it compiles all the necessary dependencies and libraries that it needs. And we've navigated localhost colon 4200, we'll see the default Angular holding page or the starting page that they give you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to that page and we're gonna, we're gonna delete it. So if we open source app, app component HTML, let's just get rid of all that, delete it and just write hello, hit save. And now the page automatically reloads. You can see all that stuff that originally was started is now gone and we have hello. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to add material design. So we get a lot out of the box from material. So to add material design is really simple. All you need to do is do ng add angular material. And then angular materials asks, because we're using uh, the ng CLI and we're adding angular material, it, know, it wants to know what theme we should add. So these are the default themes. You can also do custom themes. So for now, let's just add purple and green. Uh, you can say yes or no to this as if you want it for the mobile device. We'll just say no for now. Browser animations, we can say yes. I don't think we're gonna use it in this game, but just in case. We need to start and stop the application because it would have added uh, some config changes to angular.json and some other various config files that aren't automatically reloaded. Only code is reloaded rather than project-wide application config. Now we head back to the browser and we still have hello, nothing has changed, but let's see if we can add some specific components. You may think, why would I want to use material design? Let me show you what awesome stuff material has so out of the box these are the things you get so if we pick say something like a card and we go to examples you get these sorts of things out of the box with buttons avatar 
a hero image for that card. You get all these sorts of things. So let's put one in and, and see if it works. So what you need to do is go to API and you need to import this just like any other component into app module. So we'll add it in between these two. And then in the import, you add the Mac card. I'm just gonna put spaces around this. And then you just go comma. And you don't need to restart the application. When you hit save, it automatically reloads because these are code changes. And then what we can do, if we go to examples and grab the example code and put it in, remove hello world and we'll put it in the page. It will reload, and now you can see we have this card. Okay, it's huge, but we have this card. What we, do, we notice is we, the buttons don't quite look right, and that's because we haven't imported the buttons because the, the card actually uses the buttons. So let's go back, and if we go to um, button, and we do the same again, API, we grab the import, and we add it to the top of app module, Again, I like spaces around these brackets, just easy to read. Add this in import, save it, and then we go back to that tab, and you will see the buttons have now changed to be actually Angular Material buttons, which we can customize further if we want. So Material Design also has uh, Flex built, uh, built in, so we can add Flex by adding this, and then we get some really cool Flex functionality. So let's also add this as well, and then we need to add the module also. Same as done before in app module. And then you get flex functionality. So in material design, we do have icons. So we have all these icons. So what we need to do is to go back to here and go to icons. Yes, you guessed it. We need to add an import. Angular tree shakes, which is great. So if you do add something that you don't end up using, then the great thing is it will tree shake it out. But it's good to only include what, what you need. And then I couldn't find an image for rock, so we're just gonna use the kind of closest and worst thing. And don't laugh, yes it is, it's sports soccer, but it kind of looks like a rock-ish. Look, you can see up there, it's kind of like a rock. But now we want rock, paper, scissors, so let's, so let's take the next one, let's just duplicate this, and we'll go, this will be the paper. We'll do one more, which is scissors. Save that, we've got three. So now I did say we added the um, flex capability. We have actually got grid two, but we're gonna use flex in this situation. Is if we wrap these three in a div, and we say FX layout, we're gonna call it a row, and we want to align space between, oh, I can't spell between, and I want there to be a gap of about 20 pixels, and I wrap all of this in a div, and indent that in a bit. Let's see how it looks now. Looking a bit better. So now let's just do the action for the buttons. So now we're gonna look in the TS file, and we can get rid of the title, we're not using that. We're gonna create a function called play, and then we're gonna accept uh, the a string. And it's gonna be the type, the type of, or well, the action it could be, action, and it's gonna be a string, and we're gonna return nothing. And in this, let's just put a console log for now, and then just say what the action is. So if we go back to the HTML, on these buttons, let's just put on click, we want it to be play, and the action with this will be rock, and for this one will be paper, and for this one will be scissors. So now if I save that and save that, so now if I hit play with paper, you get paper. If I hit scissors, you get scissors. If I hit rock, hit rock, you get rock. So we need next, to comp every time we click, we need the computer to do something as well. So we will make it private because the uh, HTML does not need access to this code. So we will say private computer. It's gonna return nothing as well, so we'll have it as a void. But what we do need is a random number. To math random, it gives a number between zero and one. Times it by three to get a number between zero and two. And then we floor it. You might think, why zero and two? It's because when we put the options in an array, we can just pull zero, one, two out. 
because if we did it between one and three, then we would then, before we pulled it out of the array of the options, we need to subtract one. And then the options are, as we know, rock, paper, and you guessed it, scissors. Let's contalog what the computer does. So all we have to do is say um, options is an array and let's just pick a random number out of that and we can see how that looks. But that's not gonna get called at the moment, so let's put it in here as well. So if we say this computer, play with paper. We chose paper, computer chose rock. We choose rock, computer chose paper. Okay, we choose scissors. Computer also chose scissors, that would have been a draw. Now we need to calculate a winner. Again, this can be private. We can go calculate winner. It doesn't need any parameters and it's gonna return nothing. We can leave the console login, but we can also say this user result is equal to action. So therefore we save it to the class variable. And then when we do the calculation, we can use it. We can say this uh, user result, if it's equal to the computer result, the computer results equals the user results, then the result, which we haven't got, again, we have another public one. So it can be available in the HTML. Result, again, will be a string. We can say result equals there was a tie draw. And then after the computer has selected, we can say calculate winner. Let's do the other calculations as well. Save you getting bored, I've just typed all of these out really quickly. The user result is a rock and the computer result is a paper, the computer wins. User result is a rock and the computer result is a scissors, we win, and so on. Those are different conditions. So we need to display the result on the front end. We can have another card at the bottom. For the last card, what we're gonna do is the icon of that last card is gonna be whatever the computer chose. And then we're gonna say the computer result as well in text as a subtitle and the result itself. It's a bit squished up at the moment, but you can see there's a card all the way along the width here and the results, there's no icon and there's no text because we haven't played yet. So if you hit play with rock, there was a tie and we can see in the console log, rock, rock. Okay, let's play again and the computer picks scissors. So this is the scissor icon that we used from up here, as you can see, and it says that uh, we won and that's correct. So if I do paper next, computer wins, why? Because computer picks scissors again and we pick paper and paper loses to scissors. There we go, we have a game of rock, paper, and scissors. Let's see if we can put a score up, but let's save the results. So results is gonna, so we're gonna create a results variable up here, and we're putting it that computer starts off at zero and player starts off at zero. And each time the computer wins, we want to incre increment it. So we say the computer wins, so we do this result, computer plus plus, and then when the player wins, you guessed it, we're gonna increment so I've just used toolbar and I've put uh, a title and I've put a FX flex to push things to the left and right. And we're saying players score and then the computer score. So let's save it and let's have a look. As you can see, player is zero and computer is zero. Let's hit start with paper. So we won, the computer chose rock, the rock icon, rock title, and we won. Awesome. And we have a score of one. Let's play with scissors. There was a tie, so I stay on one and computer stays on zero. Let's go with scissors again. Yes, they chose paper. Okay, let's choose paper. There was a tie. We are doing well. If we put money on this game, we'd be winning. Okay, now the computer chose scissors at icon. We chose paper. It cuts us. Let's go with rock. Computer wins again because it chose paper. Okay, it's 2-2. Two, two. Let's play a few more times. The computer is winning and there's no AI and there's nothing in this. It is just purely random. Feel free to make any changes that you wish. This uh, repo will be open source and we can put a margin of say eight pixels. It'll probably look, immediately start looking a bit better. And as you can see now, straight away it is looking a lot better already.